Um... This one's wife balls to your podcast. Hello, I'm H.G. Judah. This one's wife had a big deal with Spotify. A multi-million dollar deal to produce some content. She buggered it up. She created a bland, beige, boring series called Archetypes, which didn't actually describe what she was doing. She meant stereotypes. She utilised it as a vehicle to have a go at every description that has been levelled at her as part of score settling. And she sent audiences into a comatose state with her own self-indulgent drawl in instances where she could even be bothered to speak to the guests. In many instances, they were interviewed by other people. Many people tuned in, not because they believed that she had anything interesting to tell us, but because they wanted to be entertained by how useless she would be at it. And indeed, it proved to be the case, with much ridicule, particularly from the likes of Hilary Rose in The Times, who each week was tasked with listening to archetypes and then conveying to the world just how truly awful it was in a comical manner. Spotify ultimately agreed because they decided to part company with this one's wife after a two-year partnership just produced the useless archetypes. They realised that they had purchased a lemon. Nevertheless, this one's wife believes that there's so much that she can offer, that she's a talented broadcaster, that she has many insightful observations to provide to the world, that she ought to be heard. Amazon decided they were not interested. Notable platforms in the world of podcasting similarly gave that a swerve. And all of a sudden, there was an announcement that she would be partnering with something called Lemonada Media. Most people's reaction to that was, what? Who? Where? And there was a scratch of the head. But this one's wife naturally wanted to make a big deal of it, because it is a big deal, because it involves her. The world was now going to be treated to her talking to some big, big names. After all, we've seen the big, big names receiving the jam, haven't we? With the likes of global titans of Nacho Fugueras, Delfina Blackier. Yes, household names, I'm sure you'll agree, along with Abigail Spencer. Basically... Californian housewife chums and one bloke. Hardly the A-list. Accordingly, given the lack of popularity of this one's wife and the fact that Lemonada Media is not the heavy hitter in the podcast world, it really does remain to be seen just who on earth is going to go on that podcast. Nevertheless, this one's wife wanted to announce it to the world because, of course, it was something in relation to her and enabled her to cock a snook at those detractors as she said, look, I've managed to get another deal. Naturally, it would be nowhere near as remunerative as that of the Spotify deal, thus the residual benefit reducing, but it was necessary for her to try and obtain it and herald it for the purposes of asserting control over the world at large. Nevertheless, it is demonstrative of the fact that the world is not particularly interested in what she has to say and that Lemonada Media think to themselves, well, actually, it doesn't appear that she's that keen to get some work done for us because her podcast has already hit a snag before it's even begun. Yes, how surprising that the woman that has been labelled as a fucking grifter has found herself all ready with a difficulty in relation to her podcast. Richard Eden, writing for the Daily Mail, explains the Duke and Duchess of Sussex were damningly described as fucking grifters by a Spotify executive hours after the parting of the ways was announced between them and the audio giant last year. And of course, this observation is is regularly repeated. It's a label that has stuck and is a frequent challenge to her need for control. 
Eden writes, So I'm sorry to hear that this one's wife's new deal with a much smaller podcast company is struggling to get off the starting blocks. Prince Harry's wife announced, amid great fanfare in February, that she had signed a deal with Lemonada Media, a female-founded company that wants to make life suck less. The Duchess, who produced only one series of her podcast, Archetypes for Spotify, before parting ways with the company, had signed with Lemonada to develop and host a new series. However, a source reveals that there is not expected to be any work broadcast this year. Oh. Oh. The world is so disappointed to hear that, I'm sure. The relaunch of This One's Wife's Archetypes podcast got pushed back to 2025, the California-based source says. Well, the world wasn't holding its breath to hear from her and therefore gives a collective shrug at this groundbreaking news. It is understood that Lemonada did not want the podcast launch to be overshadowed by the former actress's television series, which she began filming at a rented house in Montecicco last week. Netflix said the show would celebrate the joys of cooking and gardening, entertaining and friendship. Lemonada is said to be concerned that there would also be scheduling conflicts between the launch of its podcast and that of this one's wife's lifestyle brand, American Riviera Orchard. Thus, already a deal that was announced in February, here we are in April, and they're in essence starting to get cold feet about it. Why? First of all, they probably start to realise, actually, she's not that talented. Two, oh, she's not popular. Three, hang on a second, she's meant to be doing stuff with us, but she's too busy hiring somebody else's home to do a cookery show. So, oh, we're forgotten about, are we? Oh, and hang on a second, she's focusing on this American Riviera Orchard retirement home thing, rather than doing anything for us. Hmm. Well, we're not very happy about that. It seems that she's got other projects that she's more interested in than us. We threw her a lifeline. Amazon weren't interested in her, but we thought, well, we'll give her a chance. There might be something that she can do. And we've offered her a deal, and this is how we're repaid, that she's focused on the Netflix and American Riviera Orchard. You see, this demonstrates why this one's wife keeps fucking up. Her need to assert control in the moment and the style of narcissism that she has means that she has no regard to collateral consequences. She doesn't look to the future in that respect. And therefore, she gets the deal with Lemonada, which is, yep, we'll get something out later this year. And then, oh, look, something more exciting with Netflix. And I want to do American Riviera Orchard. And thus, Lemonada gets forgotten about. She has no regard for them because she has no emotional empathy. She has no accountability to them because the narcissist cannot have such accountability. It acts as a shackle and therefore affects the need for control. And thus Lemonada is now finding out that it's low down on the list of priorities of this one's wife, although they might actually find that this turns into a lucky escape. A spokesperson for this one's wife declined to comment, but sources claim she had a list of very high-profile guests, yeah, right, scheduled to participate in her new podcasts. The article then repeats who she had on her 12 podcasts for Spotify and naturally revisits the legendary quote of Bill Simmons. It then, of course, goes back and talks about how she produced such little content and tells us that in February, this one's wife said she was overjoyed to be joining Lemonada, which describes itself as an award-winning independent podcast network with a mission to make life suck less. She added our plan to release archetypes so that more people can now have access to it, as well as launching a dynamic new podcast are well in the works. I'm so eager to be able to share it soon. Hmm, just not that soon, though, huh? Thus, this one's wife, at the time, makes a big song and dance about it, because, of course, it's important for her to do so for the purposes of gaining fuel and asserting control over people, but then she shunts it to one side. Why? Because she deems that there's something more important. And that's the nature of the narcissist. 
anybody and anything is disposable. The narcissist will agree to come to your birthday party, but if they deem that they've got something better that they could be doing with their time, they won't turn up. They've no emotional empathy for you. They don't have a sense of obligation towards you for appearing. And furthermore, they aren't accountable to you. They do what they want. And therefore, the relevant narcissist fails to turn up to your birthday party. This one's wife has demonstrated similar behaviour with regard to Lemonada. Deeming something to be of greater importance than her obligations to them for the podcast, they find themselves shunted to one side. And it's now 2025, when apparently we will hear from them. Well, I wouldn't hold your breath. I very much doubt that anything will appear on Lemonada other than the existing archetype series as this one's wife will be focused elsewhere. Let's have a quick dive below the line to see what people's observations are. Are you functioning, states, I won't wish them ill, but I fail to see what any of these companies see in them. They're just not very charismatic, and they don't really have interesting anecdotes to share past their royal connections. Hibbs fan responds, they simply don't have any abilities or experience to offer. She in particular wants to be somebody, but she doesn't have any talents. Andrea, the only projects which have been successful for them are based purely and solely on Harry's family background. Her jam making is the only thing that's literally on the boil currently, and all she so far has achieved is jars of jam sent out to those who she thought would be a good marketing ploy. I've been doubtful since the start that she actually sent out 50 jars. So far, only a handful have been publicly acknowledged, so there's no way to verify how many she really made. I think she numbered them, so it appeared she sent out 50, but only made four or five, which she sent to high-profile influencers. Rogan Joss stated, I believe that because she's bone idle. Also, there's no way this one's wife went anywhere near a kitchen. My guess is she got a housekeeper to buy up a few jars from the farmer's market and this one's wife passed it off as her own. Missy 2323. When are companies going to realise that investing in these two will only result in financial loss? I wonder if businesses know this but compensate with the exposure they receive from being associated with them. Nobody's buying what they are selling but bad publicity is still publicity at the end of the day. Canadian Observer, I agree with Spotify executive Bill Simmons' description of the two of them. Claire, the problem with Harry and this one's wife is that they think they're entitled to start at the top by virtue of Harry's title. The podcasts that people really want to listen to are those that started by previously unknown people who started at the bottom but worked their way to the top, earning people's trust and respect with talent, charisma, hard work, likability and expertise in their field. I honestly think this one's wife's new ventures are destined to fall again simply due to the fact that she hasn't earned her place at the top, hasn't really put in the graft, and people will always be sceptical of her motives. Very fair assessment, I would say. The Mighty Pen offers this observation. So let me get this straight. This one's wife is delaying the launch of a podcast that she hasn't made in order to focus more on a company with no products that's being filmed for a series that Netflix hasn't confirmed. Sounds about right. Mia481, I'd never listen to a podcast of hers because I can't stand her voice. Even though I would probably actually agree with her politics, I couldn't listen to her voice for more than a few seconds. If that, like nails down a chalkboard. Geekser77 adds, it's the cracked vocals and her saying, right, after every sentence, maddening. Jimbo, cooking, gardening, entertaining and friendship. So much for the hard line, champion of women's rights and equalities. She's taken a mega leap back to the 1950s. Mrs. PM responds, can't cook, has staff to tend the garden and doesn't entertain because she ditches friends as soon as they stop being useful. Oh dear, more observations about how useless this one's wife is and the Lemonada podcast gets put back. They already are being treated in the way that she treats everybody with contempt. And I very much doubt that ultimately anything will originate in relation to that podcast. Quite simply, balls to it. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.